Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a simple slide out menu also known as a hamburger menu for your mobile apps. As you can see we're doing something here for a social media platform so don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. So today we're going to be making this assuming we're using an iPhone X device. I'm going to very quickly create the the first page so the home screen for this app. I'm not going to bother going through this in real time because it's not the important part. We're looking for the for the menu. So essentially I'm going to go for a home page for a social media app that's utilizing some tabs, but we're also going to use a hamburger menu. Now a lot of people aren't huge fans of the hamburger menu. There's still a lot of people that use that, such as Google and so on. Um, I believe it has a place, but we just need to be looking at the reason why we're using such a such a menu. So the reason why we're going to be using it in this app today is this app's going to have a couple of main tab bars, such as search and profile and home, which are what I like to think as the primary use cases for the app. This is what 99% of the users are going to be coming for. They're going to be coming for home, they're going to be coming for search, but then we're going to have some more advanced features such as analytics and support, which we don't expect most users to be using all the time. So it's a good place to put it behind the hamburger menu because we want users to be using the primary stuff as much as possible and then they can find this when they need to. So the skeleton of this app is essentially just going to be this home page with a couple of photos and the ability to sort of like, comment and share on it. So I'm just using mainly the Envision craft plugin to generate a few photos. And now you'll see we've got two artboards and we're going to begin on the menu. So to start off with the menu, all we're going to do is first of all, put a rectangle over the top of the whole screen, change it to black and change that opacity down to something around 15%. Now I'm going to copy and paste this rectangle again, and I'm going to use the width up here and I'm going to enter in times about eight tenths of the page and I'm going to change it over to white and a hundred percent. So this is the typical skeleton of how you'd expect a menu to be looking. And now what I'm going to do now is add a shadow to the edge of the page. Enter the values that you see fit. I'm, I, I'm going to go a bit over the top here and give it a lot of shadow so that it looks like it's over the top of the page. All I'm going to do is copy and paste that menu again and adjust the size to be the same height as that of the blue bar on the, on the previous screen. I'm going to remove the shadows and add an inner shadow. This is a nice little trick to give yourself a line, a border along one side of the box. And I achieved that by putting it on zero blur and minus one Y to be on the bottom. Now I'm just going to bring in a logo that I'd prepared earlier for a fictional product. So we'll just call it all C and I'm going to put a settings icon next to it as well. So I'm just going to align the two and pop them 20 pixels out from either side of the menu and adjust that opacity slightly. So that's the top of the menu done. The next part of the menu we're going to have is the user's photo. So with this photo, we're going to have the primary one, but we're also going to have if, for example, you might have four or five other accounts for whatever reason, I'm going to put photos on either side of it so that you can scroll through those photos. And when you, and when you land on another one, you'll be able to change accounts essentially. So it's a nice little visual way of keeping track of how many accounts you have logged into the app. So I'm going to make five circles here and I'm just going to mask it against the white background that we have there. And you'll see that that cuts out half of the photos that we have for some of those users along the edge. I'm just going to make up a name for the primary user. We'll roll with Carmina Jones here for the moment. And you'll see now you would understand that effect that I discussed earlier with the photos by seeing that here. Now the next part of the menu that we're going to have is three boxes on a single line essentially just listing the amount of followers uh, following and the posts. So again, I'm going to use this in the shadows trick. I'm going to make two, one with a positive one on X and one with a negative one on X. And you'll see that gives us a top and bottom shadow hangs slightly over the sides, but that's fine. We won't really notice that too much. And I'm just going to change the height to hundred and the width to, uh, sorry, the height to 70 and the width to hundred. And then I'm just going to make up some numbers here. So we'll do 1941 and I'm just going to give it a sort of label underneath and we can call that following. 
I'm going to space it out a little bit. I'm going to group that and center align it within that box. And I'm just going to copy and paste that box out a few times. I'm going to change the content. I won't bother going through that very slowly because you could put the numbers in as you please. I've just made up some here. So now we're going to move on to the menu links within the, within the menu itself. So I'm going to do this by setting a height of 70 again, having a white box and that white box is going to be 300 width, the full width of the menu. Now I'm going to add in some icons. I'm using simple line icons today. I think they're pretty neat at the moment. I'm going to put that icon 20 pixels out from the left. I'm also using a uh, Muli font, M-U-L-I. You can find it on Google Web Fonts. And all I've done is given that icon a label. I'm going to copy that out a few times over. And you can make up whatever nav links you want in there. So I've got favorites, support, and analytics. And all I've done is because I've copied it out and I'm using an icon font, I can use my icon font plugin to just change each one very easily. And on the bottom, I'm going to have a little logout section. I'm going to make that in blue. And all I'm going to do is copy just the icon and the text layer from the menus above. And I'm going to change the icon for logout and the text to logout. And just give that box a little bit more height so it doesn't look so close to the bottom of the screen. And change the color of this over to white so that it stands out nicely on that blue background. So there's our menu done. Now we're going to move over to prototyping. So we're going to go back to the home screen, select the hamburger icon as prototyping, and click that over to the page, making sure that the animation is to the right. Now we're going to select the black overlay that we made underneath the menu on the menu screen. Press prototyping on that, link it back to the other screen, and then make sure that's animating to the left. So that when you prototype, you'll then see it looks like a real menu, whereas if you didn't have those left and right animations, it wouldn't look so. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. Cheers.